the floor to the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. Shukran, Sayyidi Rai. I thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, to um, acquiesce to your wishes, we have uh, summarized our statement as much as possible. We have followed with great interest the briefings that were delivered during this meeting by the chairman of the subsidiary committees that have been formed to implement this Council's resolutions number 1267, 1373, 1540, and 1989. And we would like to thank the chairman of the subsidiary committees for, these, for their briefings. And we would like to thank you personally, Mr. President, for the great work that you have been doing as the chairman of the Counterterrorism Committee. In the recent period, the frequency of terrorist operations has increased uh, in Syria in terms of quantity and quality. And extremist terrorist groups have continued their criminal operations using bloody methods, including suicide attacks using booby-trapped cars, the use of explosive belts, as well as planting explosives that target vital facilities and targets and which aim to destroy the infrastructure of certain areas. And this aims to spread terror among civilians as well as completely destroy the structure of the state and society, not to mention the purpose of killing and wounding the largest number possible of innocent civilian casualties, especially in densely populated areas. And this has become clear by the many terrorist bombings that have targeted several areas in Syria. Mr. President, most of the terrorist actions that have been perpetrated in my country had the fingerprints of jihadist and Wahhabist and Salafist ideologies, which is known in short by the Al-Qaeda network. And they have carried the ideology of this network in terms of killing and the dismemberment and mutilation of corpses and the killing of entire families based on extremist religious thought and bloody sectarian fatwas that are issued by instigators residing in some Gulf countries. This is something that we have ever since these incidents began we have insisted that there are armed terrorist groups that belong to Al-Qaeda and that commit the most heinous of crimes in Syria. However, many political parties that are embroiled in the Syrian crisis with the backing of media bodies that are present in their orbit, I beg your pardon, have rushed to cast doubts intentionally on the truth of this information. And today, and as a direct result of this political and media manipulation, we witness uh, a, an outright declaration of responsibility by networks related to Al-Qaeda of terrorist operations perpetrated throughout Syria in response to calls issued by leaderships in Al-Qaeda, such as people like al Zawahiri and other religion mongers residing in some Gulf countries calling for heading to Syria in order to wage jihad through terrorism there. It has become clear to all, Mr. President, which are the countries and which are the parties that stand behind those armed terrorist groups, which adopt ideologies that are takfiri, salafi, and wahhabi, such as the Al-Qaeda network and the related jihadist entities and groupings. And the declaration of responsibility by these terrorist organizations for the killing of civili civilians and their sabotage of uh, the infrastructure has become a regular news item after every terrorist operation or bombing. We are even witnessing an unprecedented phenomenon, which is the trend by some members in this esteemed council to object to the Security Council issuing press statements that condemn these uh, terrorist bombings that have struck Syria four times on the 15th of August, 
the 10th of September, the 22nd of October, and the 26th of October of this year. It is indeed puzzling to see this choice to turn a blind eye to terrorist acts that flagrantly violate uh, the agreements, the international agreements to combat terrorism, and these are agreements and treaties that have been accepted unanimously by all member states. We are recently witnessing a very worrying trend where terrorist organizations and groups uh, that are active in Syria are now issuing or threatening to commit terrorist operations against civilian aircraft in Syria, and they are also making threats uh, to members of diplomatic missions uh, in Damascus uh, and, and warning them to leave Syria within 72 hours or else risk being killed. We add to this uh, the trend to turn a blind eye to the continued incitement to perpetrate terrorist operations that target uh, the infrastructure and densely populated areas, civilian areas. Moreover, Mr. President, we wonder here, is it really a coincidence that hundreds of prisoners affiliated with Al-Qaeda have escaped from prisons in Libya and Yemen and Iraq and Lebanon and Afghanistan during the period of the crisis in Syria? Is it really a coincidence that all of these takfiri and jihadi terrorists have found their way to Syria in order to wage jihad there very easily? Let's put the Syrian element aside, Mr. President, hypothetically, and imagine, for example, that the United Nations is dealing with a crisis in some country where this country is confronting terrorists on its territories who have come from the different areas in the world with extremist motives and in order to spread violence and terrorism and extremism and to destroy this member state uh, which has abided by the mechanisms and instruments endorsed by this organization to combat terrorism. This member state has provided the Council with all the information necessary and which leaves no doubt that organized terrorism is being conducted on its territories. And then return, there are other member states, members of the same organization, that claim night and day their keenness to implement the instruments of the United Nations to combat terrorism and defend human rights. Some even volunteer to establish a counterterrorism center with the blessings of the United Nations, while its top officials claim that they support terrorism in Syria and send weapons and money to the terrorists in this targeted state. What would the Council do in this situation? Would the solution lie in ignoring this information and simply continuing to monitor what is happening on the ground in that state and hold meetings, one meeting after the other? For those who claim friendship with the, the people of this country, these are meetings that aim to entrench terrorism and violence in this country. Or does the solution lie in establishing or in the specialized committees of the Security Council conducting a serious examination of the terrorism that is rampant in this country in order to determine the identity of those who incite, enrage, finance, and justify this terrorism? And to take urgent measures to put an end to it and to hold accountable to those countries and groups who stand behind it? Mr. President, the hypothetical member state that I am speaking of and which some influential states in this council and out of it seek to ignore the terrorism that is happening in it is Syria. As for the perpetrators, their identity is known to all. In closing, Mr. President, the Security Council is required now and before any other time to undertake its responsibilities to combat terrorism in Syria in order to implement the resolutions issued by this same Council. And we, from this podium, call upon your esteemed Council to take the necessary measures and immediately in order to put an end to all terrorist operations happening in Syria and to exert uh, the utmost extent 
uh, degree of pressure on the states that facilitate and finance and incite the groupings that perpetrate this terrorism in order to abide by the resolutions, the relevant resolutions of the Security Council, be they pertaining to counterterrorism or to Syria. The terrorist actions uh, that have been committed by the armed terrorist groups in Syria have shed blood in the blood of our people and we will question and wonder in the future we will question and hold accountable all of those who participated in these actions and incited them and facilitated their perpetration i thank you sir i now invite the